Welcome to our tutorial about the tempo track. This is what Cubase uses to store your tempo and key signature changes. You need to use the tempo track if your song changes speed. In this lesson, we'll learn what the tempo track can do for you and how to use the tempo track. Tempo tracks are used most frequently when you're working with MIDI. Tempo is measured in beats per minute, and for more information on how this works, Please see our course on general recording, mixing, and mastering. There's a few lessons in there about music theory that will be helpful to explain this if you need some assistance. The tempo track doesn't show up in the track list area with the other tracks. It's an editor that you open by going to Project on the main menu and scrolling down and selecting Tempo Track. The shortcut is Control T, that's a Command T on your Mac. The tempo track editor opens. Let's take a minute to review the interface. In the top left corner, we've got the Activate Tempo Track button. It's orange when the tempo track is enabled. You'll remember from our previous lesson about using the click track that you specify whether Cubase will read from the tempo track or from a fixed tempo that doesn't change for the duration of your song. I'm going to bring in the Transport panel. If you select Tempo on the Transport panel, toggling it on, then Cubase will read from the tempo track. If you toggle tempo off, you'll be using the fixed tempo and that doesn't change throughout the project. With the tempo button lit, the activate tempo track button is also lit in the tempo track. Cubase follows whatever is laid out in the tempo track when that button's orange. By the way, the tempo field in the transport panel always displays the current tempo setting at the location of the playback cursor. Even if the tempo track is disabled, any time signature changes you've set up in the tempo track will take place. Also, you can't change the tempo of recorded audio, but you can change the tempo of MIDI, and for that reason, the tempo track is used most frequently with MIDI compositions. Next are some tools that you'll recognize from the other Cubase interfaces we've talked about already. This opens the event info line. Click it again to toggle it off. Here are some editing tools that you'll recognize from the main project window also. First, we've got the object selector. Next, the eraser, the zoom tool, and the draw tool. Each of these is blue when active. Here's auto scroll. Here's where we toggle snap mode on and off. And here we choose the snap to value. Next is the Tempo field, which displays the value of any selected tempo event or tempo point, or the tempo at the playback cursor. Here's the standard project ruler, now displaying our project in bars and beats. Let's change it to seconds. Here we see the position of the left and right locators as they appear in our project. Along the left vertical axis of this grid, we see the number of beats per minute, and currently it's set at about 102. This blue line represents the current tempo. At the bottom of the screen is the horizontal scroll bar. And here's the vertical scroll bar. We use these to get around the tempo track editor. Here's the horizontal zoom bar. This lets us see more or less of our song as we require. Here's the vertical zoom bar. And this displays the tempo ruler in more precise units as we zoom in and in less detail as we zoom out. Now let's talk about how to add points. I can use the Object Selection tool or the Draw tool. With the Object Selection tool, just left-click anywhere in the Tempo display area. Each left-click will place a point. With the Draw tool, I can simply drag or click as well. Use the Object Selection tool to drag points up and down, left and right. And we remove points with the Eraser tool. The zoom works just like it does in the Project window. Click to zoom in, and Control or Command click to zoom out. We can adjust a range of points at a time with a window select, and then drag as desired. And let's change to bars and beats display. 
and zoom in a little bit. When I activate snap mode, I am restrained horizontally by the value in the snap type drop down menu. Let's try to insert a point between the bars. The object selector tool will override the snap. I'm able to place points as desired. And let's remove these points by pressing Ctrl Z on the keyboard. Let's try to insert a point with snap mode active using the draw tool. Now, as you see, I'm not able to. I can only snap to the grid. Again, to override the snap mode, use the object selector to place your points. Generally, we enable the snap function when we want our tempo work to be really precise, right on the bar or beat, etc. It's pretty useful. All right, let's window select and delete these tempo points. Now let's talk about the Insert Curve menu. This is where we tell Cubase how to change the tempo between two points. We've got three options here, Jump, Ramp, and Automatic. Ramp is currently selected, and Ramp results in a gradual transition between two points, as you see currently in the Tempo Display area. If you select Jump for your Curve mode, then all points you create and modify will transition abruptly to the next tempo change. And let's select and delete these points. The Tempo Recording Slider is this tool here, and it lets you record tempo changes in real time while the project is playing. After you press play, move the slider to the right to speed up the tempo, move it to the left to slow down. Let's take a look at the last two options here, Open Process Tempo dialog and Open Process Bars dialog. Let's click on the first one, the Process Tempo. Here's the Process Tempo dialog window, and this is where Cubase helps you figure out the tempo of your piece and change it. First, we choose the time display, and I'm going to use bars and beats, because that's what I've currently got selected in my tempo track. You need to enter the total length of the bars you want to modify. The values that appear here are based on the current positions of the left and right locators, but we can change those values manually. Let's enter 28 in the end field. Now we go to the new range section. Let's slow it down a bit, changing our end point to 36. Press Enter and click Process to apply. As you can see, our tempo has changed from about 102 down to about 80 to stretch out the range to the desired number of bars. Let's close the Process Tempo dialog window. And let's undo the Process Tempo. Now let's open the Process Bars dialog window. From this interface, we can add and remove parts of the song. Basically, you can insert silence or delete time or change the time signature. Now the cutting and inserting we can do from the regular edit menu, but in this interface we can do it in a bars and beats environment where we can calculate the necessary range and make sure that the time signatures stay in sync. It's a little more intuitive than doing it from edit. Let's scroll down to range. Cut time, delete time, paste time, paste time at origin, etc. Let's go back to process bars. Your selection is shown in green on the bar range slider. You can drag it to change the length of your selection, but it's probably easier to do this by entering values in the start and length fields. Let's enter a start position of one and a length of two bars. Now let's go over to the action side of this dialog window. We can choose one of four options, insert bars, Delete bars, reinterpret bars, or replace bars. And underneath the action field is where we specify any new time signatures that we might be using. We use the arrows on the left to adjust the beat subdivisions and the arrows on the right to adjust the number of beats per minute. Okay, let's talk about how each of these actions works. Insert bars. This inserts the number of bars that you specify in the length field at the start position. In this case, I'm going to insert two bars at bar 1. Delete bars removes the number of bars that you specified at the point of your start value. 
Reinterpret bars will adjust the range you specify to fit the time signature you enter here. Now what's cool about this is that the playback stays the same. It's just that the bars and beats and tempo get adjusted to fit your new framework. Let's say you change your time signature from 3-4 to 4-4. Quarter notes from 3-4 would become half note triplets in 4-4. With replace bars, this replaces the time signature but without the reinterpretation. And this is obviously very handy for scoring MIDI work. Click Process to apply your changes. And then Close to get back to the Tempo Editor. Let's undo that. Edit, Undo Insert Bars. Now let's talk about how to add a time signature change. We need to use the Draw tool for this. Under the Project Ruler, we've got what's called the Time Signature Ruler. We need to select the place where we want to insert a new time signature. Activate the Draw command. Click and enter your new time signature. Let's say 2 over 4 and enter to accept. And as you see, our bar is now subdivided into two beats. Instead of into four beats per bar. Just select in the time signature ruler using the object selector tool and then press delete on your keyboard. And we're restored to 4-4. And this concludes our lesson about using the tempo track.